Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. These gold little star freckles, but make sure you keep on watching. I'm using my moisturizer and then I'm going to go to my Makeup Forever Ultra HD Stick in the shade Y365 for a base. I'm using a foundation stick. Mm. I hate foundation sticks. I don't know what it is. I think it's the consistency, the thickness. I prefer a liquid like a thousand times over. But for the sake of following a James Charles tutorial, I must use one. So the only one I actually have in my collection is the Hourglass, I think it's called Vanish Stick. Mine is in the shade Sand. I tried this once and I was just like, see ya. Oh, okay, so he puts on quite a lot of it. Um, when it comes to foundation sticks, I am like absolutely terrified because they're so thick. Oh, I hate that feeling. I, uh, I'm just going to draw a big penis on my face. Ew, when I slide this across my face, you can see my pores. Oh, oh, oh. I bought this because of him, so I can do this part. I feel like I'm spraying $5 every time I spray it. I'm also going to grab a little bit of Too Faced Born oh. Foundation in the shade Natural Beige and just put a little bit on the back of my hand and I'm going to dip into my Beauty Blender and kind of use this foundation to blend out the Makeup Forever Ultra HD stick. These are both what we don't already have enough on. Okay, so I've actually run out of that foundation because it is my all-time favorite and I use it on the daily. So I'm going to go with the Bourjois Healthy Mix because I feel like it has the closest consistency and he's using that to blend in the stick which slightly terrifies me. Okay, he literally just made that foundation stick work. I hate it by itself. Oh my god, what a cool little trick. I feel like it just kind of makes it more like, I don't know, it just spreads it out better. I'm still a little bit too yellow for my body because my fake tan's really faded, but I'm well, I'm just gonna blend that down, all the way down to our ankles. Keep it going. Oh my god. Uh. Okay, so here goes in with the Tarte Shape Tape. I always almost call it the Sharp Tape Shape. I don't actually own that. It is like nearly impossible to actually get that concealer in Australia. So the closest concealer that I have that has a high coverage is the Kat Von D concealer which again I hate, um, so I'm actually just going to try and mix it in with a little bit of the Instant A through one to create something similar I hope. I haven't actually tried that one that he's using but I presume it's not as heavy as the Kat Von D but it's heavier than the A through one so I'm kind of, I don't know what I'm doing. Just putting that directly underneath his eyes, oh this is so thick, down the side of the nose. I don't know if it's all the studio light that we added but I think if my eyes are about to see to me that we were having a super Wait, super good skin day today, which we let me go back. Okay, and then he put some on his forehead and then on his chin. Oh, I don't like to highlight my chin. It's already big enough. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of the instant age rewind just on top to help it get a little bit of hydration because it's so dry. I also put a little bit underneath here, which I don't usually do either. Well, I guess these are all the tricks to why he looks so damn good all the time. Having a super, super good skin day today, which makes me so happy. Speak to yourself, you sister. For in my life. To lock our face in place, then we're going to be using the Honestly, I would rather use any concealer. Anything. I don't think it's bad on like flat areas, but underneath my eyes where I get my little wrinklies. The Laura Mercier translucent setting powder. I really like only and get the most creases, so I really just like setting hair to lock them in place. But then I literally just add the. Let me just get started. I feel like this is full of products that I hate, but it's just the fact that I am a very like light. I like a lot of light face makeup, so usually I'm not using like um, stick foundations or like concealing those areas in my face because I don't like to add that much product. Um, I hate the Laura Mercier powder. I, it does not work for my under eyes at all. <gasps> Oh my god, it just broke. It was like $80. And that little bit that it just broke off. Thanks, Laura. Okay, so he takes it and he packs it onto his nose. I've never done this before. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. That worked really well. Like, I actually haven't tried it on any other part apart from my under eyes. Lightest layer of powder possible and even powdering at all because I really like the summer dewy foundation look. As you guys know, 
I feel like it just looks so beautiful. I definitely want this look to be super, super golden and bronzy. Oh, whoa, well, well, well. hang on. Oh, does this wreck your beauty blender by putting such powder on it? Okay. That's twice now that he has completely like shut me down on two products that I hate and now I don't mind. I think my problem is that I was just maybe, maybe baking just isn't for me. But it is just like a general setting powder. I don't hate it. I don't actually have the benefit of Blue Bronzer. I never ended up buying it even though everyone used to be obsessed with it. So I'm going to use the Bourjois Bronzing Powder instead. I feel like that's maybe the closest shade. You can use code JESS for 10% off all the Morphe brushes. Just kidding, Morphe has no idea who I am. I dig it into my face too hard. It's definitely going to leave the powder looking super, super patchy and I definitely don't want it to cling onto them. Still kind of want foundation. So I'm just being super, super light and letting my color get on there naturally. Alright, so lesson to you guys, I literally just okay, chill. reinforced the highlights on my face. It's always good to reinforce those highlights that we originally put on with the concealer. I don't have the Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette, so I'm going to use the NYX Highlight and the Contour Palette. It's kind of the closest thing that I have. So it's always good to reinforce and make sure we are snatched and fully chiseled. I'm actually going to grab the Shade and Light Palette and then lightly contour my nose. Ooh. Guys, I'm really bad at contouring my nose. It's just one thing I can't do. Really full that I'm baking the rest of my face too. It is definitely oh, a hot minute. Really? Why not? I feel like when other people do it, it always looks so good. And I just... Why is this such a harsh line? It's been a hot minute. Because I literally just did my entire eye on camera. Okay, so he skipped doing his eyebrows on camera, so I'm just going to quickly do it. But I have seen him use the Benefit Precisely My Brow a few times, so I'm going to go with that one and just fill them in. His are like quite a lot thicker than mine. I feel like they're very sharp and precise, which mine are never. Mine are always like wild, bushy, and free. So ever since um, I heard about James Charles, I feel like I first ever heard of him because of his controversies, which you know is never really a, like a great start. Um, I know now that he was definitely around on social media quite a bit before that, I just never heard of him. So I feel like I formed a very negative opinion very fast and that negative opinion wasn't formed by myself, it was kind of by the opinions of the internet which is never a good thing and I kind of want to slap myself in the face for letting that happen because um, I would hate if that happened to me. And yeah I formed an opinion from other people's and that is never okay you should always form your opinion purely by yourself. I'm sure that happened to him quite a bit during that time period is that people were just forming opinions because the internet had that opinion so they're kind of following like sheep I was definitely sheeping, like I remember I worked in a cosmetic store and the cover girl stand I had to put up this big picture of his face and I was like oh my god it's him, like I just was like oh. And I remember thinking about it at the time and being like why do I have this opinion? I couldn't even think of a reason of why I had that negative opinion. So quite a bit of time went by and I remember seeing him absolutely explode on the internet Keeping in mind I never ever watched one of these tutorials, I'd never looked at his Instagram before, I just kind of heard of him. Um, and then I saw ads and stuff pop up that he was doing a meet and greet at I think Pacific Fair which is like a big shopping centre kind of near where I live. And that's kind of where he kind of like re-entered my mind and I was like oh like he's actually quite ginormous if he can come to Australia and host such a huge meet up. Um, no one ever comes to Australia. And then a few days later I stumbled across one of his videos by accident. I think I might have just like auto-played after someone else's video. Best thing that could have happened ever because it completely changed everything. So pretty much I ended up accidentally watching just one of his videos and becoming obsessed and thinking he was just the absolute god of makeup, god of YouTube. Um, I think his work ethic is what kind of sold me. He is such a hard worker um, and I think it really shows through his insane success at such a small amount of time. Um, so I ended up like binge watching, I'm going to say like nearly every single one of his videos and now I absolutely freaking love him. So my point being is that I feel like people shouldn't judge 
just on other people's opinion. You shouldn't be a sheep and just because you heard something about someone. Ooh, that's my favorite shade out of the whole palette. Yeah. That's what I wanted to happen. And that's gonna be another M433 brush. Chill, dude. Brush, and I'm going to dip into this orange shade right up in here and put that in the crease once again to deepen it up. Okay. And putting it through the crease, I think. Why do the colors look so different? A little bit into the crease. Okay. And then I'm going to put it on my M562. I'm just going to go. He's taking a brown shade and putting it in the outer corner and slightly through the crease, I think. slightest bit of the black shape on the bottom corner and just deepen out the very 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 dark shape. I'm going to be super super careful with this color because adding too much black can really ruin this look very 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 quickly. I'm going to add a light amount and then blend it out. Mm, I'm about to get this up real bad. Coke give me strength. I'm blending this out. I definitely am not going for a black smoky eye look today. Maybe that's what sort of magic is this where he can so calmly chuck a pitch black onto his outer crease area and just like nail it? Oh my god, I already ruined it. Next video, I? but for now, I just want to. How does he do this? Orange shade in the bottom right corner. Oh, just use. Actually, I just got that palette in the mail today. How are you? So he takes this little shade down the bottom and uses that to create almost like a cut crease. Just to carve out the crease. Oh, the shadow is literally so pretty. Oh my god. To add a little bit of glitter and more pop to this eye look, I'm going to grab these Stila liquid glitter stuff in rose gold retro. You guys know these are so bomb. I'm just going to pop this over top of that shadow. Okay, so I don't actually have any of the Stila liquid glows because they're a little bit on the pricey side. They do look absolutely amazing, so I think one day I'm going to have to splurge and get some. Uh, but for now, the closest product that I have is the new Astralis Metal AF Liquid Eyeshadow. And this is in the shade Bronze It. What, bronzite? He's just applying that over the oh, lid. Yeah, wow, that is what we're looking for. Ooh, so hopefully. It gives a similar effect. Might be a bit too almost pink, possibly, but that's fine. You kind of got to use what you've got. You're not always going to have what they're using in the videos. Oh wow, we're going smoky. Okay. Smoky. I just put a little bit of it down right after I just started this glitter fall out. Oh my. I'm definitely going to hug this shadow very, very close to the lash line. When I get to this outer corner, I'm also going to blend it up into this dark outer wing portion, being very, very careful to not really take it down into this area. Just ha haven't got the hang of this whole baking thing. For mascara today, I'm going to do a light coat of Benefit Roto Lash. You guys know this is my all time fave. And then for Do I have I'm that? My Costa Lash is iconic. Like Okay, so he puts on a different mascara. I don't have that, so I'm going to use the L'Oreal Lash Paradise. Um, I never usually put on mascara before I put on my lashes, so... Lily Lashes Miami for the past like 64 years straight, so it's time for a little bit of a switch up. So I don't own any of them, so I'm going to use the Coco Lashes in Fifth Avenue because I feel like they're the closest kind of style. never gonna guess what just happened oh um so my expensive Laura Mercier powder just exploded everywhere love a good sister spill are you joking this was like $80 it's literally like $10 sitting on my lap right now I am so mad I'm so mad the Anastasia is so Hollywood illuminator. I use this all the time, like literally in every single video, but it truly is so good and it works really perfectly for my skin tone as well. Yeah, so I don't own that one, so I'm going to use the Maybelline Master Chrome. So it's a really nice golden highlight, super intense. I feel like that's probably the closest one that I own to that one. As well, you guys know the drill by now. I'm also going to highlight my nose using my M431 brush. I'm going to start off by lighting my lips using the matte lip pencil in the shade Whirl. Got it. Spray. So this 
is the completed look. There's definitely a few things that I would have done different, but that does not make either of us right or wrong in any way. Um, it just goes to show how creative and different absolutely everyone is. Everyone does everything in such a different way, and I love that. I feel like it also looks a little bit heavier on my eyes than his, which is probably due to the way that I applied it. So that is a look completed. I feel like I learned a lot of different techniques by actually sitting down and following a tutorial rather than just watching it and maybe trying it again a few days later. I learned how to get some use out of this damn foundation stick that I used to hate, but now I feel like I could maybe get my money's worth because it was I think it was pretty damn expensive. I feel like I can actually use the Laura Mercier powder a little bit more confidently now. Before I feel like maybe I just wasn't using it correctly. Um, but I absolutely love how it looks on my skin today. I feel like for some reason it came out super vampy on me. Everything always does. Maybe I've got too much of a heavy hand. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this style of video. absolutely loved filming. It was so much fun apart from spilling like $80 of powder all over myself. And the funny thing is that it's like late at night and I live in an apartment complex so I'm not allowed to vacuum. So I literally just have to leave it there on the floor. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a video you want me to do or there's a um, tutorial that you want me to follow by someone, please leave a comment below letting me know what you want to see. I'm sorry if I sounded a little bit like croaky or sick during this tutorial. I do have laryngitis, so I'm kind of like, <laughs> Other than that, thank you to James Charles for existing, and I'll hopefully see you all in my next video. <laughs> Bye.